now that you've uh, understand a little bit more about the who, okay, we're actually gonna dive into where they are. Understand that the market is not a person, it's a location, okay? And th again, this is something that I never learned in my marketing degree, <laughs> okay? Uh, we, we treated it, we, it was like the market was a person. No, no, now that you know your who, where are they going? What is the market that they're going to? And so um, we're, we're gonna go to this next part in the picture here, which is, that's what I, it's the market. It's like all these people with my megaphones. Hey, I got this, I got this, right? Um, now I want you to all imagine with me for just a moment. You wake up in a little village, right? You wake up in a village, it's where you live. You wake up there and you sell little trinkets or whatever. You wake up, you, 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 I don't know why I always say this, you put on a little funny hat, you put on your little apron thing, you put all your trinkets inside of a cart, where do you push the cart? Where people are. And wh what are they probably doing there? Buying. Buying and selling, right? There's, there's probably other competition as well. We tend to not know what a market is, therefore we can't choose one, okay? And so I wanna walk through with you guys, um, <laughs> where do you sell your trinkets? Yeah. So what is a market? What is a market? You know, I remember the first time I ever tried to go um, sell real estate was one of the first attempts I ever made. Um, it was one of my first of my 34. And, uh, and I went, I did all, I was listening to this guy on this podcast. This is where I got obsessed with podcasts, actually, which eventually led me to Russell. Um, which is why I say I don't lose, I learn, right? As, as part of the path. And I remember I was listening to this guy and, um, and he said, go put up these signs all over the road. Right, I totally did that. These, they call them bandit signs, you know, these street signs all over the place, looking for house to sell fast for cash. Need to buy house fast for cash. And I attracted all these buyers and all these sellers. I got 300 phone calls in the first month. And I went and uh, I was trying to put together these deals. And I went and I got seven contracts on houses and commercial properties. And uh, was in, I was trying to go sell them and uh, flipped the contract for a little bit more than I got it. And I learned how to appraise properties and stuff. And it was, it was fun. It was one of my first attempts I ever did. And um, I was really trying to sell this stuff, but I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know what marketing was. No idea what funnels were. I, didn't, I mean, I was a complete noob. And um, um, I remember at the failure of that, because it failed hard, I ended up not selling anything. And it was like, it was so frustrating. I remember coming out of my mouth saying, this market just sucks. It's the market's fault. Who is the market? They seem very powerful, whoever they are. But I don't know what a market was, right? A market, just see, so we all know, a market is nothing more than a, the place that buyers and sellers go to exchange around very similar products. A market is nothing more than a bunch of very similar products. That's it. And the buyers and the sellers that go to exchange them. Does that help? Okay, but markets don't always hang around. We're gonna talk about that. There's some markets that survive. The Beanie Babies market kind of died, right? You see what I'm saying? The iPhones are still hanging around, but uh, you don't see uh, Pogs any much, any much anymore, you know what I mean? Okay, so ask yourself, if the internet wasn't here, okay, I love the internet, obviously, it's a huge accelerant, but it's also a distraction without this background, okay? If the internet wasn't here, and I'm waking up in my little location, and I'm, you know, I gotta put my funny hat and my apron on. Where am I pushing my cart? Where would you sell your goods and services? How would you sell them without the internet? Understanding that piece and then applying the internet, magic. Hey, okay, that's what we're gonna go through uh, uh, pretty soon here, okay? Um, I, when, and when I say market, I, don't, I wanna make sure you understand what I'm not talking about. A market is not acts of marketing, okay? Um, the market, again, is where your dream who shops. It's a bunch of collection of the very similar products and services, okay? Acts of marketing are things like a webinar or a presentation funnel, um, a sales letter. That's an act of marketing, not the market. You see, does that help? Yeah. Um, a launch campaign is not the market. That's marketing, Okay, uh, ads, mechanisms that you use, uh, mechanisms that you do and say, they're actions, okay? That, those are acts of marketing. I'm talking about the market, the place that people go. Does that help a little bit? Hopefully that was clear, <laughs> okay? Um, so we're actually gonna walk through, um, there's, a, there's four different um, aspects to market selection. Uh, or what I call the market 101 that we're gonna walk through here. And I put that picture up there because I want, this is how actually how I visualize it in my head. I think of an actual like farmer's market and that's where my people are going. 
And they're going with an intent to solve a problem or just, oh, I'm just looking. You mean casually hoping you buy something? Because <laughs> you want the dopamine hit? You know what I mean? Oh, I'm just looking. You ever say that in a store? Can we help you with anything? Oh, I'm just looking. Slash trying to get rid of some of this cash in my pocket. <laughs> right? Um, so we're going to talk about four separate things here. We're talking about market timing, market uh, selection, how to use the market as the foundation for your entire business, and market positioning. This is, in my opinion, the reason why people make it or don't with the funnel thing. Okay? This is a big deal. And we're not going to get through all this through, through lunch or whatever, so we'll pause and we'll come back to it. But this is like, this is the piece, this is marketing. Okay? Um, and I want to share with you guys how I actually how I do this. Many, and I, so we're going to talk about market timing first. Many, many, many billion dollar companies attribute their success, a lot of their success, to timing. Have you ever read the book Behind the Cloud? Anyone? It's a, uh, a book about the success of Salesforce, how they became a billion dollar company. They invented, right, uh, instead of shipping software that people install on a computer, they were the first ones to go do like cloud based software. So you'd have to go ship software to people and for them to install it on their computers anymore. Um, how, how, do, how did they get so big so quick? They're huge in the CRM space, they're the category king of CRMs. Um, timing is what they attribute it to. Um, market timing matters. And I want you to, we're going to walk through what that means here. Um, you have to understand that not all markets uh, are actually ready for your product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's epic timing, right? That is not. <laughs> what movie is that from? Yeah, that was such a good movie. I enjoyed the movie a lot. He's this beast, though. When he's in high school, his origin story is that he was the big kid and I always picked on him or different. Okay. Market timing matters, though. And a lot of times, uh, products will not be successful or, or not because the market is not ready. They don't have a booth in that category yet. They don't have a, does that make sense? Um, um, now, we talk about this whole idea of the market being too early. Um, versus, uh, like I said, right on time. There is what we call a, how many of you guys have read Ocean, read, read, read Ocean, Blue Ocean? It's a tough read, right? I mean, it's like written by PhDs for PhDs. I'm like, oh gosh, like I had to listen to it and like pause a lot. <laughs> You're killing me. And they have this whole idea of the red market. And what is the red market? Fierce competition. It's red because it's bloody. It's the, right, they call it the red ocean because there's sharks all over the place. There's people competing like crazy. People are forced to compete on margins. Oh, you're looking for that thing? And there's a million people offering it. I'll give it to you for less money. What happens? Yeah, they go out of business. They drop the price and drop the, I'll bleed more for the customer. No, I'll bleed more for the customer. No, I'll give it the weekend. No, I'll suffer more. You know what I mean? And so, so I, finally, you're losing money. There was a guy we were building the funnel for. I, I, I was blown away by this. So when I was at ClickFunnels, and it was for someone very big. <laughs> and they were like, we were selling and making tons of money for them in this cool funnel. And uh, they're like, when's it gonna start making money? And we're like, what are you talking about? You're putting a dollar in and getting like three or four out every day. So like, yeah, but when's it gonna make money? I'm like, I don't know how else to explain this. You're putting a dollar in and getting three or four back out. They're like, but when will it make money? We're like, it's making money. We're like, what's wrong with you? And I did like several phone calls with them and walked them through. And they were selling the product at a loss in our funnel, knowingly. And I was like, we didn't know that. They're like, we thought that's how you create value. <laughs> what? We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> are you serious? Raise your prices. How much are you paying to get that? They're like, $29. You're having a sell for 25? Why? We'll create value. Value is the easiest thing to create in the world once you understand it. We'll create the value. Make money, right? I was like, oh my gosh. Oh. But that's what happens in these red markets is they just drive down, 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 and hopefully somewhere they pull them profit, right? Blue, and that's, that's, that's why I circle as far as those guys. Blue markets are like the new markets, right? There's no blood in the water. People aren't competing on price. People aren't competing with these low margins. And... Uh, there's usually not as much content um, inside those markets. Okay, those are the blue ones. So the whole point, and why we want, why, why I bring this up, is that those who create um, a new market tend to dominate it. The creator of the market tends to own it. How many of you guys have read Expert Secrets? 
right? It says, I'm gonna go create a new opportunity. Go create a brand new opportunity. Um, and again, the goal is to be different or new, not better. If you create something that's better, I'm gonna go create something in the red ocean by default. If it's new or different, it's why the secret MLM hacks program sells so well. There's not really anyone else doing it. That's the point. Um, helpful? Okay. Yes. So this market timing idea matters. And what I want to share with you guys is how to know when a market's ready for your new opportunity. Because not all of them are ready. Who wants to go into, you know, Kodak disposable cameras with me? Anybody? No? We'll go to accessories for disposable cameras. Yeah. It's not a strong enough market for me to go sell into. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with this. Okay, uh, really awesome book, 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Also, they were the ones that wrote Play Bigger. Um, they said one of the laws in there that they found over tons of data, law number 10 is what was called the law of division. Over time, a category or what we call market will divide and become two or more categories. Okay, I want you to imagine that these markets that are out there, they either expand and split off and keep growing or they die. Markets aren't static. They move. There's force inside of them. It's like when somebody comes around, they're like, I'm going to be the ClickFunnels killer. Do you know how much money they spend to create that category? Good luck. Jump, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're not going to live. And like the 39 people who said they're going to be the killers, most of us can't name maybe more than two. I actually can't name any of them right now. I don't remember which ones they are. But that's the point. The creator of the market is usually the one that dominates it while everyone else feeds off of the leftovers by competing on margins. Yeah? yeah. An aha? Okay, cool. Uh, second piece with this is that, uh, again, it's the first law of the immutable laws of marketing is that it's better to be first than better. First is always the one that takes the cake. Okay, now I'm gonna give you guys an example here. Uh, back when uh, Al Gore created the internet, and the Facebook dislike button. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, please give me a break. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, he did not create the internet, although he claims that. He comes two computers together. That's not the internet, bro. <laughs> anyway, um, this, is how, this is how products become red. This is how a market becomes red. Now, think about like back in the time when, again, Al Gore created the internet. In 1991, the internet became publicly available for everybody. How many internet service providers were there? Yeah, there's probably like one or two, right? That's it. Right? So we have one internet service provider. And then someone's like, holy smokes, look at the cash they're creating. And then more swoop in, and more swoop in, more swoop in. And there's all these, all these, all these, all these. And people start competing on price, and the water starts to get bloody and red, and the companies are suffering in order to get a customer because they don't know what funnels are. Um, right? And then suddenly, someone's like, wait a second. All you're trying to do is send packets of data? Why don't you just come over here to this place called smartphone data, right? And sell it back to those people. Like, you could also send data, right, across cell towers. See what, does that make sense? And what you want to do is find, this, this goes against everything I was taught in college. Like, oh man, that market's really competitive, Stephen. I don't know if you want to enter it. Oh, that's a big statement. Flip that. You want an insanely red, bloody, highly competitive cutthroat market to sell into. Why? They are creating your customers. They're the ones bringing people in. They're fighting that hard for a little bit of a margin. Imagine how much marketing dollars are behind the internet service provider space. Tons of money. If I was gonna go sell to a market, I'm gonna push my my product into that market. Because look how much noise they're making for me. I'm just gonna wait for them to get fed up customers. Make sense? It would be hard for me to create the smartphone data market if that wasn't red. Okay, and that's why you want crazy high competition. Massively high. It's actually a security to your new market to have and be connected to something that's massively competitive. Okay, the goal, again, I, I don't know why that's popped out all weird. The goal is to become a big fish in a little pond. Okay, and you do that by creating the pond. Yeah. <laughs> Making sense? Yeah? Any ahas with that? I mean, what are your questions? I'm not sure you're asking. 
like a USP? Oh, the four P's? Uh, I'm not quite sure where you're going with it, but the goal, like I said, is to become a big fish in a little pond. Okay. And you do that by creating the pond and creating something that's brand new. How many of you guys know, just looking at that, you're like, crap, I'm competing on margins. Anyone have any ahas with that? Yeah. <laughs> People not putting their hand up as much, <laughs> right? Right. That's, that's, that's why this is such a huge deal, uh, is because if you want a lucrative offer, right? the tagline of this event is how to design and launch wildly lucrative offers. The answer is, don't compete where everyone else is. I'm going to sell it into the place where they're all going, but I'm still going to create my own pond. Yeah? Nice. All right, let's move forward here a little bit. Okay. Um, and again, there's a picture of, of that happening. Um, markets aren't static. All right, where these places go where there's lots of products and such, they're not static. I like to think of it like a, that's why we call it an ocean. They're moving. They're in momentum. They have these, they have these, um, uh, <laughs> funny, most people, like I said, most people try to swim up or across or under a river. Swim with it. Right? Some people try to resist the change as their way of being new or different. Don't do that. You swim with it. You swim with it. And, uh, this is um, uh, what happens when you put a boulder in a river. Right? What happens? There's water. You drop that, uh, drop that boulder in there. And what happens to the water? It changes course. And what I'm going to teach you here is how to see what those things are inside of your market that will cause a change in direction. You can move with it. And it's really easy to create sales when you do it this way.